Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Stu Snydman, and I'm the Associate Director for Digital Strategy at the Stanford University Libraries. And I'm Rashmi Singhal. I'm the Interim Director of Arts and Humanities Research Computing at Harvard University. And Rashmi and I have the great pleasure this morning of taking a slightly deeper dive into the world of APIs, and in particular, the two kind of initial core APIs that uh, make the magic happen uh, for IIIF. So Tom did a nice job of um, introducing you to the concept of um, APIs. Um, APIs are essentially the, uh, the technology solution that makes your data interoperable and the powerful functionality that we'll see today and the rest of the week possible. They're the connective tissue between your data um, and the web apps that software developers are building um, to expose your content and do interesting things with it. Uh, there are two essential APIs that make IIIF possible. The Image API is a simple web service uh, that fetches the right pixels from the server and delivers them to your web browser. The Presentation API does the rest of the work. It uh, delivers the necessary information to drive the viewing experience in the application. I'm going to give a couple of examples of the powerful functionality that IIIF makes possible to kind of uh, solidify this notion of how APIs connect your data um, and application functionality. So uh, Tom showed earlier our friend Wayne Vale um, and the Japanese tax map and the power of deep zoom and incredibly large images. In this case, we have uh, a single instance of an image and its associated metadata um, on a single server at a single institutional repository um, that is delivered to a web app uh, made possible by the APIs. Here's another nice example of image comparison from the Art Gallery of, of uh, Ontario. Um, it's a beautiful website of, uh, of wooden boxes um, that allows you to select multiple images, add them to a cart, and then compare them in the, same, uh, in the same web environment. In this case, we have two images um, with their associated metadata on the same institutional repository or server delivered to a single web app um, via the APIs. We can compare even more. Here is a wonderful example of six uh, versions of the Gutenberg Bible uh, at six different institutions being zoomed and compared in the same workspace. So this is where the diagram gets complicated. Six different institutions, their images, associated metadata, each implementing the two APIs delivered to a single web application. And then we can go the reverse direction. Um, this is uh, uh, a live demo of um, CogApps illustration uh, of the ability to take the same image and on the same server and deliver it to three different web applications. All right, so in this case, the Universal Viewer, Mirador, and the Interarchives Flipbook Viewer. So single server, single image, or image set with its associated metadata via the APIs to three web applications. One final example from the National Gallery of Art. This is a case in which the National Gallery of Art took three different photographs using uh, multispectral imaging um, and co-registered the three images. And we have the ability to overlay the three images, adjust transparency, so you can see each of the three instances of this image um, uh, and reveal different details. So here we have a single server with three images, its associated metadata, uh, delivering this experience to the, to the web app. So, uh, this is made possible by both the Image API and the Presentation API. So I'm going to take a slightly deeper dive into the Image API. As Tom showed, the Image API, it's itself a relatively simple URL. Um, it's a URL that humans can read and make sense of. Um, but most of the time, these IIIF URLs are acted upon by machines by servers, by software. Um, I'm going to base this uh, walkthrough of the image API 
uh, using an image from uh, University College Dublin. Uh, so this is uh, a single image. It's, uh, its image API URL is uh, shown there at the top. And let's break it down into its component parts. So the first bit, the scheme, server, and pre prefix, um, uh, these are all going to be institutionally specific. So the server on which the IIIF APIs are, from which the IIIF APIs are delivered is going to be locally unique. Um, and the identifier of the object of the image is also going to be locally specific. But the rest of the URL structure um, is going to be the same across institutions, across implementations. Um, we have five parameters, region, size, rotation, quality, and format. So we can break down the URL uh, and see those five components uh, at the top. In this case, we have a, the full region of the image, uh, the full size of the image at no particular rotation using its default image quality and delivered as JPEG. Easy enough. So the first important parameter to understand is region. So we can start cropping this image to just take a section of it, maybe so we can cite it. And you can see that the URL changes to specify the starting XY coordinate and then the remaining height and width of the object. So now we have the region specified, still full, uh, the full size of the image at 0% uh, percent rotation, um, its default quality as a JPEG. The second parameter is size. We can specify size based on its uh, height or width in pixels or by a percentage. Um, in this case, uh, we've asserted that this region of the image should only be uh, 400 pixels wide and whatever height adjusts the aspect ratio. We can also set the parameter to, uh, to force a distortion of the image uh, to violate the, the aspect ratio if we like. Next parameter is rotation, which also includes mirroring. In this case, we've just rotated the image uh, 90 degrees. Um, we could also uh, add an exclamation point to flip it. If the server supports it, we can adjust quality. Now, this is for those of you who, are, uh, who work in imaging. It's a fairly primitive notion of quality. Uh, it's essentially uh, color, grayscale, or bitonal. Um, but uh, if the server supports it, you can uh, downsample an image so that it's grayscale or bitonal, or just tell it to give me whatever the server has um, is the default image. So here we've converted the image to grayscale. And we can deliver it as uh, many or most popular web formats, PNG, JPEG, TIFF, PDF, etc. So you can actually experiment with the image API to kind of get a better understanding of it yourself. Um, this is a, a, an animation of University College Dublin's uh, crop and site functionality. It's a really wonderful feature on their, on their website um, that not only lets you create a citation URL in the form of uh, a IIIF uh, URI, but also lets you see the, um, the URL change as you change the parameters on screen. So you can go in there and you can drag the, the bounding box. You can see the x, y coordinate and height and width change. And then at the bottom of the screen, I'm not sure if it's showing up, you can see the URL, the IIIF URL adjust. You can change the size. You can change the output format. You can change the rotation and ultimately get a URL that you can cite. So um, I created a little uh, bit.ly link. And if you want to experiment to see the, the image API in action, um, you can go play with it yourself. So that is the image API uh, in a nutshell. I'll hand over to Rashmi. She can talk about the presentation API. Um, thanks, Stu. So um, you've seen all the images, but what you may have noticed in um, a number of those examples was that there was actually a lot of information surrounding the images, and that's where the presentation API comes from. Um, as Tom and Stu have both mentioned, it's uh, just enough metadata to provide that viewing experience for the user. And so in this example, um, we're looking at MSTYP 1000 from Houghton 
Library at Harvard University, um, and you can see that there's a variety of information that, um, that is driving this user experience. You have a table of contents, you have information on the bottom. Again, you see the image API that's, that's powering the image in the middle. Um, and so there, there's a lot of information going on. And, and so what I want to do is dive a little bit deeper into where that information is coming from and how it's actually creating the experience that the user is seeing. Um, so this is uh, one of the folios in MS TYP 1000. And um, what you can see at the top is um, there's what's called a label. Um, and that is coming from the catalog data at Harvard University. And the next part you see on the side is the metadata. And this is very basic metadata. This is not meant to create a new standard. This is taking, this is lifting data that's coming out of the library catalog. Um, and in fact, we're not using all of the catalog data that exists because it's quite extensive. There, it's a MARC record and there's METS data. So we're not taking everything. We're just giving enough to the user to understand what they're looking at. Um, and you can't see it, but at the bottom, it links to the actual catalog record so that the user can get more information if that's what they need. Um, on the side, um, uh, the, the um, field in, in the presentation API is called a range, and that's how you describe a table of contents. And in this case, uh, the catalogers at Harvard spent a lot of time um, creating um, in the METS file the, the structure of the document. And so that's why we have the front matter and the calendar and the hours of the virgin and the prayer, et cetera. Um, and so that information was created um, external and it's part of the um, Harvard database. And we can now use it in IIIF. And then lastly, on the bottom, <clears throat> you'll see a sequence. And that is actually telling us the order to display the images. So if you have a collection of 500 images, that's not going to be useful unless you know what order the viewer should be looking at, especially when you're talking about a book. You need to know what order to put them in. So in fact, the bottom is a combination of both the image API for those individual thumbnails as well as the presentation API where we have little labels at the bottom that's describing each folio number. So this entire thing is what's called a manifest. Um, so I'm going to give you two terms, and hopefully they're not too complicated. Um, the manifest is describing this entire object as a whole, and it's a way to describe how one or more images are related to one another. Um, and so in this case, this is how we're describing it. We're, we're giving the metadata that, that describes all of the images. We're describing how the images um, relate to each other in terms of order, and we're providing um, contextual information about uh, the table of contents. <clears throat> uh, so then in this example that um, Tom also showed, this is at uh, Biblissima, and this is showing you know, the individual images that were cut out um, imposed on the original page. And so what we're seeing now is uh, that we have, again, the contextual information about the object itself and the images being populated. And so what I want to do is actually break down why we can have these different images. So bear with me. This is going to get a little bit more complicated. Um, so here we have what's called an empty canvas. And it has a height and width. And what we can do is place an image on top of it. Um, but we have the image without that detailed image inside of it. So Let's place it on top. But how do we know that's supposed to be there? We know that because we can provide, and I'm sorry that this is hard to read, um, but we have the coordinate information, the x and y coordinate information, and a width and height to say this is going to be placed on this canvas at that particular location. And in fact, if you didn't have the background image, you could still place it on the original canvas. And you would just not be able to see any of the other information. So this is how IIIF and the presentation API starts to give you more power to provide the user with um, an experience of how to actually view their, their collections. Um, but you don't, you don't just have to place images on top of each other on a canvas 
in the presentation API. In this example, um, we have um, a reconstructed manuscript that had been cut up and sold to multiple institutions, and there are, in fact, transcription annotations um, on, for, for each of the lines on this page. So again, we're going back to the empty canvas example, and we have a heightened width associated with it, and we can put the image on top of that empty canvas. But what we can also do is start adding the transcriptions on top of the canvas, again, with, with the X and Y coordinates to describe where exactly those transcriptions exist and, and what part of the image it actually relates to. So in this way, you start to build up a stack of information through the presentation API, which will hopefully provide the user with all of the information that you already have at your institution through your, your cataloging record. Um, and you can just present it to the user in, in interesting and unique ways. And what's really nice is that a lot of these IIIF uh, viewers that exist, Mirador, Universal Viewer, um, the Internet Archive, Book Reader, et cetera, are capable of displaying all of this information because they're IIIF compliant. So this is a, these are the different ways that you can start to expose your information to the user. So, ultimately, if you want to use IIIF, you need two core things, the image API and the presentation API. And how do you get that? You have some sort of image server. Maybe you host it, or maybe you're using one of the vendors that are IIIF compliant. And then you need to have some sort of presentation API service. And again, that's some sort of server that's, that's exposing that, that limited metadata and will likely be coming from, um, from your catalog record itself. If you have those two things, then you can start to use any of the viewers that have been built for the community, um, and you can start to experience IIIF on your own. Thank you.